Hello, good morning, good afternoon, depending on uh, where you are. Uh, today, MIPI Alliance will uh, present on how MIPI camera and display and sensor interfaces are essential enablers for ARM-based devices. So, I'm Michele Scalatella, I'm from uh, MIPI Alliance, and this should be your presenter, will be also one of the speakers, along with uh, Hugo Santos from Synopsis, who will be speaking on behalf of uh, MIPI Alliance today. Hugo is the CSI2 working group member and also is a uh, vice chair of the automotive working group uh, then we will have james goel from qualcomm he will also be speaking on behalf of mipi alliance today uh, james is the chair of the mipi technical steering group and vice chair of the mipi display working group and finally myself i will talk about the i3c so uh, just two words about mipi alliance mipi alliance was um, um, created in 2003 to standardize the uh, camera and displays in mobile devices. It was a big success. And since then, you know, after a uh, so number of years now, the Alliance has grown to uh, over 400 members. It has developed specification uh, in uh, many different areas. Uh, we, we cover now more than 50 uh, specifications and they are widely used in not only mobile ecosystem, but also in uh, automotive industrial. And now we also found application IoT and, uh, and uh, uh, aerospace industry. So with that introduction, I would like to pass the uh, presentation to Hugo. Hugo will talk about the CSI, the camera set interface version two. Please, Hugo. Hi all, I'm here to talk a bit about MIPI camera solution. CSI2 is the most widespread image sensor interface in the embedded systems industry and is used most on phones and tablet cameras. A widely adapted, simple, high speed protocol, primary intended point to point image and video transmission between image sensor and devices. Why is it used? Well, it's robust, it's simple, and very efficient. On the slide here, we can see a typical a system where you have the CSI2 TX, TRX uh, on a ESP bridge and the host processor on the other side. A normal use case is image sensor transmits the image, ESP bridge do some Im image processing or merging and then transmit it to host processor. To support this protocol, we also have I3C that is used to configure the camera using CCI or very low bandwidth information. MIPI CSI2, going from mobile to a vision platform, evolving to address growing vision processing needs. CSI started as a mobile solution, but evolved to meet market requirements. MIPI Alliance is continuing to advance comprehensive image conduit solutions for human consumption and machine vision applications managed to broad the range of product platforms, including mobile, IoT, drones, and automobile. For that, the spec improved over the years to improve, for example, uh, bandwidth, like IORT, reduce the pin count, like USL, or functional safety and security, now with the Ford V0. We also uh, increased the support for different files we support today C-Fi, D-Fi, and A-Fi that have different applications. MIPI-CSI2 advanced features, up to 32 virtual channels. This is very important for sensor aggregation, one use case very used today. Latency reduction and transport efficiency. CSI2 was already very effective compared with other protocols, but without need to go to low power, the bandwidth available for the application increased. Raw 24 data types. Critical for machine vision, better quality, better results. Power spectrum dissipation. With 5G and so many devices in a mobile phone, controlling the power spectrum is key. And this feature allows that. Unified serial link, reduce the wires embedding the sideband on the CSI protocol. Without need of sideband, all the protocol is merged on DeFi or CFI protocols. The channel becomes bidirectional and in increase the long reach. Smart region of 
With smart region of interest, the image transmitter is less, reducing the bandwidth and power required comparing with transmitting the full image. Ideal for industrial or medical, looking for small anomaly. VPCSI 2 out their new features, always on Sentinel controller. Low power interface protocol to support always on cameras that operate low frame rate and low resolution. Using only the sideband channel, there is no need for C, PHY, and DFI, reducing the number of wires and power. Multi, multi peaks of compression is the evolution of the previous compression protocol with gains up to 20% higher. Raw 28 image capture for mission control, real time perception, autonomous applications. Ideal for machine learning. More information about CSI 2 before on MIPI website. MIPI also developed other specifications to support CSI 2. One example is MIPI CCS. It enables developers to craft a common software driver to configure the basic functionalities, reducing the integration requirements and development costs. Other area of development is automotive. MIPI CSI2 protocol is already established in vehicles today. MIPI CSE enables functional safety capabilities required for ADAS, self-driving and other applications. With CSE, it's possible to lower development costs and certification efforts. Another important aspect in automotive is long reach. MIPI provides the A-file link for long reach service connectivity solutions. MIPI PAL maps CSI2 protocol to the A-file A-packet format, enabling CSI2 over an A-file network. Here is uh, some sort of further information that you can search on MIPI site. I hand over now to James to continue the presentation. Hello everyone, I'm James Goel, Chair of the MIPI Technical Steering Group and a Vice Chair of the Display Working Group. Today I'm excited to talk about the MIPI Display Serial Interface and its related mobile and automotive display ecosystem. This group of specifications is designed to work together to provide low power, high bandwidth display solutions for embedded and automotive displays. This presentation provides a high level overview of the DSI2 interface and interested readers will find more technical details in the public links at the end of this section. Display bandwidth has grown at various exponential rates depending on the type of application. This graph illustrates historic display bandwidth growth for mobile, tablet, automotive, and AR VR applications. And it extrapolates these trends with predicted future growth. On the Y axis, the display bandwidth in gigabits per second is plotted exponentially. And on the X axis, the year. As you can see, these application bandwidths are accelerating while the physical interface noted here in yellow, the phi, has a fixed growth rate. This increasing bandwidth requirement is one of the key challenges for embedded mobile displays. Many new IoT, industrial and automotive display applications are driven by new industry trends described by the acronym CASE, connected, autonomous, shared and electrified. Connected devices use advanced LTE and 5G networks to increase network bandwidth and drive higher resolution displays. Advanced automation allows new applications more time to use higher resolution and more plentiful displays. Sharing is a natural consequence of automation and provides more opportunities for applications to use displays. Electrification requires low power, light, and efficient displays. Traditional embedded display applications continue to demand increased resolution and frame rates while reducing the power consumption and electrical interference tolerance. 
To meet the application needs defined in the previous slide, the MIPI display ecosystem supports a wide variety of topologies. This diagram illustrates the most popular and basic embedded display system. On the left, the host processor contains a GPU with pixel display engine that drives two outputs, a command and control stream and a pixel data stream noted by these two arrows. The display command set or DCS is used to configure all display parameters and provide any command and control sequences required. These DCS commands are encoded into DSI2 protocol packets that are sent through the physical interface layer to the embedded display controller. All non-DCS pixel data streams go directly through the DSI2 protocol and into the file layer. The DSI2 is designed as a very lightweight, low power, efficient display protocol that supports both video and command mode transfers. A combination of in-band CCI data along with pixel data is streamed through the physical interface to the display, where the reverse operations allow the display panel to display all pixel data. The complete embedded and automotive display system is defined by a family of MIPI specifications. This figure illustrates how these MIPI display specifications are organized and work together. MIPI calls this a data and command protocol stackup diagram, and it defines the flow of pixel data and command and control data as it moves from the application processor to the peripheral. On the left column is the application processor that produces the pixel data, and on the right column is the display peripheral that receives and displays the pixels. Each stage of the application processor and peripheral display is matched. On the far right are the names of the MIPI specifications related to each stage of the diagram. The application layer contains the pixel generation GPU hardware, along with appropriate display command set generators as defined by the MIPI display command set specification, or DCS. The low level protocol block generates the required display serial interface packet-based encoding that encapsulates the pixel and DCS instructions for transmissions across the phi physical layer. This is defined in the MIPI Display Serial Interface 2 or DSI2 specification. The lane management block allows the DSI packets to be transmitted across one, two, three, or four data lines, depending on the application requirements. This is defined in the DSI2 specification as well. Finally, the five physical layer at the bottom specifies the transmission medium, electrical conductors, the input and output circuitry, and the clocking mechanism that captures ones and zeros from the serial bit stream. MIPI defines an automotive AFI and two embedded data phis named CFI and DFI. These specifications define the characteristics of the transmission medium, electrical parameters for signaling, and the timing relationship between clock and data lines. The complete MIPI Automotive SERTI Solutions, or MASS, encompasses many specifications. These specifications are divided in two ways. On the left, these are horizontally divided into the protocol layers, protocol adaptation layers, or PAL, link layers, and physical layers. Vertically, these specifications are divided by application family, camera, MIPI display, Visa display, and other supporting interfaces. The best way to understand how mass specification interfaces to follow the data through an example application, like the one shown in the previous slide. Starting at the camera, the pixel display follows the MIPI CSI2 specification with new CCS and CSE extensions added for functional safety and security. This CSI2 protocol is translated into a packet format using the MIPI 
Protocol Adaptation Layer, or PAL, for CSI2 specification. It defines how these packets are efficiently translated for optimal AFI transmission. The AFI data and physical link layers here at the bottom of the diagram transport these A packets over the display stack. The display stack reverses the direction from the AFI physical layer up through the PAL for DSI2 protocol and conversion up through the DSI2 with display services extensions until the pixels make it to the glass of the display. Please note it is also possible for the A5 physical layer to transport these A packets up to the Visa display stack if the appropriate A5 bridge supports it. In this case, the A packets are converted to native EDP or DP packets using the MIPI PAL for EDP DP specification. Finally, other protocols are also supported as indicated in the far right stack. This slide provides some public links for additional information and a deeper dive on many of the topics discussed in our presentation today. Thanks, James, uh, for the presentation. And uh, now we move on to the uh, I2C. So back, uh, back me again. Uh, so um, so uh, we've already seen from Hugo an interesting application of I2C, but the uh, is much more than that. Basically, I2C uh, was developed to uh, to answer the need for uh, to manage a you know, very number of large number of sensors that you find uh, proliferating in in the different um, uh, markets uh, in the mobile, IoT, automotive, and so on. So the goal for I2C was to uh, to to keep it uh, simple, but with uh, with the number of uh, sophisticated functions that would suit for all these different applications. Uh, it would uh, it is um, um, uh, simple also from a physical uh, level. Only two wires are used in I3C. Uh, low gate count for implementation in uh, target devices. Um, and then um, we important thing is that the uh, the I2C was developed to keep the I2C compatibility in mind. We we are aware that there are billions of I2C devices there, and they will be in the market still for some time. So it was very important that the I2C bus will be able to accommodate also the presence of I2C uh, for uh, development of you know, future product. So in terms of a um, uh, bit of the history of specification versioning there, the first specification was issued in end of 2016, uh, which was followed in 2019, end of 2019, the version 1.1. Um, we recently, just this summer, issued, uh, let's say, a maintenance version of 1.1.1, which is really a big uh, rearrangement to make it uh, more uh, easier for people to to go through. Uh, you know, the, the, the I2C is uh, close to 500 pages specification, uh, and also with few few uh, few additional features. Uh, the uh, alliance recognized the fact that it was a very this has the potential to be a very important very important protocol and so to even though the footprint of companies um, present in the MIPI alliance is quite large it was decided to have also a version which is open to any company as long as the uh, the uh, comply with MIPI alliance IPR rules uh, this is the IP uh, I3C basic version uh, which was the release in 2018, and then this summer was also released the, the new uh, upgraded version 1.0. Uh, along the line, a number of uh, other entities have, uh, have been uh, adopting the I2C. Uh, here I mentioned the JEDEC that uh, is adopted that for the DDR5 standard. So they will, we will see this in, uh, in data servers and in this type of application. Okay, so the features of the IGC are quite vast, you know, to enumerate today, I think it's not. What we are doing is just highlighting some few, uh, few of them in, uh, in, in some areas. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a fast uh, compared, of course, to I2C and I2C. We're not comparing to, to display on camera stuff here. Uh, just data control type of application. And so compared to those specifications, it's fast standard. The clock rate is gone up to 12.5 megahertz from one megahertz of the uh, I2C fast mode. Support low power, 
there is a dynamic uh, management of the uh, lines uh, the two are interfaced that we can all be in different modes to optimize speed and, and power consumption so in addition to the standard transmission mode there is a number of high data rate modes have been defined uh, which are different depending on whether we need uh, i2c compatibility or not and there is also an option introduced in 1.1 to have a multi-lane uh, sda multi-lane support to go even higher speed uh, but the um, compared to IGC, new IGC also introduced a number of system management and advanced functions. For example, in, in the advanced functions, uh, you know, you have repeated starts. Means once all the devices go in IGC mode, they're very fast, they consume little power, and you can repeat several times to have a number of operations in sequence, very fast and very efficient. Uh, you have um, addresses group addresses multicast addresses to, to with a single command to address all the devices or part of the device in the system and then some new interesting things like in-band interrupt for fast servicing of of, uh, of events uh, it's possible to reset devices with the command avoiding extra wires you know in custom implementations a hot join error detection and so on and there is also a, a basic um, a configuration function done by a device configuration register and bus configuration register. These are registers where a device tells what are the capability. It's not like a full blown thing like USB, but it's it's quite sophisticated. Um, and then, as I said before, it's, the, it's, it's compatible with I2C. In particular, it's uh, we use a lot uh, the feature that is present in I2C devices. They they eliminate pulses which are shorter than 50 nanoseconds. So so-called 50 nanoseconds pipe filter. So the uh, I2C uses a lot this this feature. Uh, so if you are planning to to implement the I2C, make sure that the I2C you are using do have this spike filter. We found this to be present in most of the devices in the market. So the the um, so in addition to the specification, we have been developing additional material you know to support the ecosystem in particular there is a conformance test suite which is the document is a good very good starting point to develop uh, test uh, test suites uh, in terms of software support a host controller interface specification and reference software implementation is available open to all companies uh, that comply with the uh, MIPI IPR rules the ACI is being implemented is, uh, as a Linux kernel module and available since end of 2020. So there is a, so if you are using uh, a system which uses some kind of flavor of Linux, uh, Linux embedded Android and so on, you know that if you are using a, a, a kernel from certain revision, you know that the kernel driver for IJC is already in there. I think this is a very big plus. We also um, integrated the IJC in addition to the camera that was mentioned before, also for debug interface. MIP has uh, developed a number of debug uh, interface specification, system discovery, uh, uh, FAQ for additional uh, you know, curiosity if, you're, if you have doubts about some things. Uh, before the COVID, we used to run uh, plug fest interoperability tests. And we have a number of application nodes in many areas which are coming out soon on the version 1.1. Um, so here you will find uh, many additional information in addition to the specification, webinars, white papers, interviews, and so on. So there's plenty of material to browse and learn. So with that, we uh, conclude now the presentation. I hope you enjoy the material we have presented. And if you are uh, um, would like also interested in joining the automotive workshop, please do register for that. Uh, for any further additional information, there is the contact uh, mail in uh, in the slide. Please do contact us for any uh, for any reason joining me. Be uh, to further technical questions. So, thank you.